Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm a software engineer in Vancouver, and today I'll be taking you for a day in the life at Amazon. And I'll be answering if AI will be replacing our jobs. Artificial intelligence. Is Chad GPT coming for your job? AI could replace 300 million full-time jobs. It's a new day at the Amazon rainforest and we have some really exciting updates. First, we had our team event recently and today will be our second bi-weekly board game session. I'm also having my performance review. I really hope that goes well. And lastly, the most exciting news, I just came back from my trip to Japan and I got to see the Tokyo Amazon offices and it was nothing like I expected. Okay, the burning question, will AI replace all our software jobs? Should I be worried as a software engineer? Honestly, I am a little bit. Ever since ChatGPT dropped in 2022, it's been fully integrated into my life. I genuinely can't imagine life without it anymore. And if you used it, you know how powerful it is. Tools like ChatGPT, Copilot, Cursor, they can literally write and debug your code for you. It's wild. So yeah, it's definitely fair to ask, are software engineers gonna get replaced? And is software engineering even a career worth getting into anymore? So here's what Mark Zuckerberg said about this. Probably in 2025, we are going to have an AI that can effectively be a sort of mid-level engineer that you have at your company that can write code. And then over time, we'll get to the point where a lot of the code in our apps and, and including the AI that we generate is actually going to be built by AI engineers instead of people engineers. I actually think there's some truth to what Mark Zuckerberg said, but here's the thing. Software has always been evolving. I think the best thing we can do is lean into the stuff AI can't easily replicate. And soft skills now will matter more than ever. Code might be written by AI, but the person who decides what to build and how it fits into the big picture, that can still be you. So will our jobs change? Definitely. But honestly, they always have. And that's kind of the fun part of being an engineer. Back to work, slackers. Race gear. Someone I referred to Amazon got an offer. This was my friend from UBC. They were always so nice and helped me a lot during my third and fourth year. We actually had so many classes together. Data structures and algorithm, computer architecture, networking, and we would compare notes and help each other during those assignments. This was so helpful because I didn't know many people and I was really struggling during assembly language. Anyways, we graduated around the same time. They had applied to Amazon before and got an interview, but unfortunately they didn't have headcount around that time. They they reached out to me and I referred them to the new grad role and they got it. They actually told me that things were slow for a while, but then all of a sudden they got multiple offers at once from other companies. So if you're on the job hunt, just keep working on it. Sometimes these things are just timing and luck related. You'll definitely get that next job. Last episode, I said that I was going to be handed this project and I'm going to start working on some development and I got really excited. Well, turns out the project was just going to take way too long. My manager needed to reassess and rescope it. So right now I'm mostly just just working on like software maintenance, updating pipelines, updating code packages. You see how I feel about it. It's 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 not the best, but you know what? It's good still. I still get to learn a lot. We got a new person on my team. If you are a girl and you want to work at Amazon, please work at Amazon so you can be my friend. That would be really cool. Recently had lunch with a new friend I made. I showed her around the office. She was like, wow. I was like, there's not very many women, is there? And I'm like, yeah, there really isn't. <laughs> Which is why it's very important for women to work and so they can be my friend. My job is to scroll through this spreadsheet and look for numbers that are scary. It sounds dumb and Mark said it dumb. My friend Marlene from work is a super talented artist and today she gave me some of her prints which are Studio Ghibli inspired. Just look how amazing these are. While I was in Japan, someone from the Tokyo team reached out to me because they saw my videos and they wanted to give me a tour of the offices and of course I said yes. The Amazon office is about 30 minutes from the Tokyo core and it's in a super central location. I will say though that all the Amazon offices have a very similar style. It has a modern workplace design with open workspaces and phone booths. Then the fun part, we checked out the cafeteria, which is way better than the ones in Vancouver. Their cafeteria was serving curry, ramen for just about 700 yen. But what surprised me the most was the language dynamic. I assumed that everyone would be speaking Japanese, but Chiho told me that her whole team speaks English and many of her teammates are international. She had colleagues who are UBC and Berkeley alumni. It almost feels like any team from North America could be transplanted in Tokyo and it would still 
still work. Be sure to check out my Tokyo vlog. You don't want to miss it. Last time I told you that I was setting up a weekly or bi-weekly occurrence of the board game sessions and we had one already. We played poker. It was really fun. Some people didn't know how to play. I barely know how to play. I had to chat GPT some rules just to refresh myself and I feel like poker is kind of a really interesting game to see are you a risk taker or are you good at lying you know it's kind of fun and then later today we'll be having our board game i'll give you an update about how it goes Okay, it's about that time of the year for a performance review. Today, I had mine. I always thought that once I was out of school, I'd be free from the pressure of assessments and grades, but here we are getting assessed for our work. My performance review was a report based on self and peer assessments. These assessments were written in January when I had only been working for a few months and I had only worked with a few people, so I didn't get a very thorough review. But in the assessment, you basically just highlight your strengths and weaknesses based on the nine peer principles. I mean, Amazon's 16 leadership principles. I worked here for three years and something about me is that I know all nine core Lumen principles. So here was my summary. One of my strengths was learn and be curious, which is good. I always want to be learning and be curiousing and that I could improve on my customer obsession. And I think that since this review is written, I've learned a lot more about our customers and their business needs. I've even worked on our business onboarding on call shift, which is just another shift we have during business hours this time. And you'd help other teams with their integration with our service. And and hopefully, if you've had a performance review recently, it went well. It's 4.30 right now, and we just finished playing the board game. It was really fun, and it was called That Escalated Quickly. It's kind of similar to that game, Wavelength. I'm actually considering buying it because it was really cool, and maybe it could be a good Christmas gift. Anyways, I think I'm going to be wrapping up my work and heading home soon. At 8 a.m. today, someone poisons the coffee. Do not drink the coffee. Cordially future Dwight. Okay, it's after work, I'm at a cafe and I'm working on one of my hobbies. And I don't know if anyone else is like this, but when I see something on TikTok of a new hobby, I'm immediately buying all of the new tools and gadgets to start. Right now, I'm working on my knitting project. I'm working on an orca sweater. If I'm being honest, I've been working on this sweater for four months now because I keep getting bored of doing the exact same stitch for the whole thing. The amount of yarn that I've purchased relative to the amount of knitting and crochet projects I've completed is a really crazy ratio. I I definitely had to ban myself from going to the craft store all the time. I started my research into some other hobbies. For my trip to Japan, I invested in a used Fujifilm camera. I'm not a photographer at all, but I'm really hoping this camera will turn me into one. You'll find out on Instagram how well this hobby turns out. I recently also got a 3D printer. I really want to learn how to 3D model and make figurines, but I'm not gonna lie, I haven't opened the box yet because it's super intimidating and I might just have to get some practice before I show it on camera. But be sure to subscribe because I'll definitely be showing that process in my new video.